so I learned something new to do. Alright guys, how's it going? Thought I would change the start of the video a little bit, kind of jazz it up for the new year, you know how it goes. So I was playing with an add-on today, and it's called Hair Conductor. And you need to excuse the pun, but it's a little bit of a head scratcher to be honest. And one of the reasons behind this is because when you actually go to the Blender Artist thread, nobody's responded to this. And I find that completely strange to be honest, because it's pretty damn cool. Now this could be because it's a kind of language barrier perhaps. When you check out the GitHub page, the language has been converted from Russian to English I believe. Or there's certainly some grammar issues, but I'm dyslexic so it makes no difference to me. But even just following the basic instructions is a little bit difficult to understand. So I'm going to show you how this actually works. And I'm actually going to show you the potential of it. Now here's something I made a little bit earlier. Looks pretty cool. I'm going to start off with a new scene. Because I would like to talk about some of the caveats and pitfalls that you might actually run into. Now the first one being, you cannot scale or rotate the object in object mode. I think it actually messes with the vertex coordinates. So that's kind of a big no-no. You need to do most of this in edit mode. So I'll go into edit mode, press 3 to select polygons. I'm going to extrude this down. I'll scale it in a little bit. Extrude it down a little bit more. Scale it in and I'll do it one last time. And I'll just kind of move this over to the left a little. Now in terms of topology, it needs to be pretty efficient and it needs to be clean. You can't have any kind of open polygons and I believe you can't have n-gons. Now, the first thing we need to do is assign a vertex group to the base. Now you would consider this as the base, but believe it or not, it kind of works in the opposite. So it's actually the root. So I'm going to select this top polygon. I'm going to go to the vertex groups and I'm going to add in a vertex group and I'll call this base just to keep things nice and tidy and I'll actually assign this. So essentially what we've done here is we've assigned a vertex group to this polygon. We'll quickly jump back into object mode and one thing you really need to do is have a material applied. So let's see if we've got material. Yep, we're jamming. I'll then go to object and I'll go to generate hair by object. Now when it comes to the add-on, it's not the most efficient and there is a few kind of bugs to be honest. So we'll expand this up and you can see here build a new map. So we'll click on it, I'll do a calculation in the background. Now this I believe opens presets, so I think you can actually save presets and kind of assign them to here. And this will assign a new material. Now I'm not entirely sure what this is, I don't know if it's a modifier stack or maybe just a kind of checklist. But what I'll do is I'll hit new here, and you can see here it's decided to build new here. And it kind of follows the topology that we modelled. Now at the moment it's set to object, I'm going to change this to curve because I would like a curve. Now we won't see anything, it kind of looks spotty and the reason for this is the hair size. So I'm going to put the hair size up to 1.2 maybe. Let's see what we get. That's looking good, maybe go a little bit higher, maybe go 1.8. Now we can increase the count so we can add more follicles or more hair and we can add the number of vertices. Now 4 seems to be curving pretty well, we maybe put it up to 5 and we'll maybe make the count something like 15. Let's check it out. Okay, looking good. Now one of the features that I really do like about this is it's got the hair deform collection. So if I hit the plus sign here, you can see that we have a few different noise types. We have gradient noise, we have a resize, we have rotate, gravity, etc. So I'm going to put the noise power up and I'm going to spank this up pretty high. And we end up with this nice kind of splayed effect. Really nice. Now, when you're building hair, obviously you would model more than one of these and you would do it kind of like hair cards. And then you would generate these curves. But... I think this has a lot more potential to be more than just a hair conductor. One of the advantages here is you actually can add bones. So the bones will follow the mesh that you've created. So if I hit the plus sign, I'll add bones in the background. We can then auto assign these, but I'm not going to bother at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scale down and I'm just going to hit save the hair. Now I'll do the calculation again. You can see here I have a whole bunch of hair. I'm going to hide the cube and we end up with something like this. Pretty cool to be honest. Now obviously this has a material applied, which is excellent. Now you probably could do this with particles or hair particles, and even just using the grooming tools, but this is pretty nice effect to be honest. And it's a little bit abstract as well, it's not necessarily needed for hair. And obviously because it's a curve, we can control the curve options, we can go to geometry, we can add more depth, we can spank it up to something like this, and then we can convert it into a mesh. And that is pretty much how the hair conductor plugin works. But one of the things that I wanted to kind of show you is you can use curves to begin with. So I'll just quickly give you an example, it's probably easier. So if I go to add, I'll add in a mesh, I'll add in a bezier curve. 
And what I'll do is I'll come to the geometry options, I'll put the depth up a little bit, and I'll put the resolution right down, so let's make it kind of squared like this. I'll then convert the object, so I'll go to Object, Convert, Convert to Mesh. I'll then tab into Edit Mode, and what I'll do is I'll loop select the end polygons here, or the end edges, so let's go to 2. Let's do a loop select, press F to fill. Let's do this again. I now have this kind of object, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the polygons. I'll rotate it. So let's select this polygon here. Let's go to Vertex Group, add Vertex Group, and we'll assign it. We'll then go back into object mode. What I'll do here is I'll go to object, generate here by object, I'll run the build, I'll sign a new one. Now when you use a preset you can't actually manipulate the values so you better always just kind of start. Uh, let's put the count up a little bit. Uh, that looks good and I'll hit, this time I'll hit the bones and this time I'll save it and hopefully I'll add bones in the background. Now oh, let's hide this and you can see that it actually follows the shape of the curve. Pretty cool to be honest. Do me a favour guys, I highly recommend you check this out. There is going to be an update in February, apparently. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter, support me in Gumroad, you know what to do. Take care! I said that a bit mental there. Anyway, ciao.